Right then everyone, I'm out and about in the field. Just met a nice gentleman who's a runner. He's just given me a bit of information about the um the wood up here, how he was in the wood one day with his dog and a shotgun went off. He said, don't go up there now, he's been hounded by the farmers. But it's probably because he had a dog with him, you know. Just thought I'd stand here for a bit. Yeah, this is just another scene. I've just seen a buzzard. Could be a sparrow hawk flying down there. Yeah. Looks a bit small, might be a young one. Yeah, he'd just been talking to this bloke. He said he's had lot he won't go up in there at Banwell Wood anymore. They've actually scared him off. He's a runner. He said he used to love doing that little run up there. But after the bloke with the shotgun, he said um he's given up going up there now. He's found another route that he does. Yeah, he's really friendly. But of course, you know, I'm a woman on my own in the middle of nowhere. He's a bloke. I was a bit suspicious of him first, because um he sort of disappeared into a hedge for a while. He might have been having a wee or something. And then I had to get on my way. I had my can of orange aid, my, my naughty Fanta, and a naughty orange type chocolate bar. <laughs> God, I watched this program all about the gut last night. I'm experimenting with these people who've all got IBS. And, uh,. It is true, really. They talk about your heart dominating your body, but your gut does. And I think is, I, you learn how to, what you, everybody knows what upsets them. So you try, you try to avoid it, but what it is, it's usually something you really like. Do you know what I mean? And all these people starving themselves, having someone else's bacteria implanted in them, having colo colonic washouts. Um, eating all sorts of food they never normally eat. <sighs> Sometimes I know when I'm going to have something naughty, like a cream cake. I know I'm going to suffer for a week. But IBS isn't life-threatening as such. So basically, I know. I punish, I, I know, I, I, I say to myself, you've had that cream cake, gal. And, and I know, I, and I, so I accept the fact that it'll cause me discomfort for two or three days. And I don't do it a lot, but every now and again I say, no, I'm having a bloody cake or I'm having a burger, which I rarely have. I rarely have chips. I like, I like my veg. I like my fruit. I like yogurt. I've been eating natural yogurt for years and I, and I go buy it. I go buy it. And then I exercise. I gave up fags now quite a lot many years now gave up cigarettes um, it must have made a difference but of course I got asthma I, I did catch a nasty type of SARS type infection many years ago round about the time the first SARS thing came out and we were told at the time that it was probably that some of us were, had caught it in the hospital this is before all this COVID stuff and I think it did affect my lungs because I had to, for a while, I had to have inhalers. But I always used to blame it on cigarettes, you see. Anyway, I give up the fags. And I thought, God, I've given up fags. It made a bloody difference. <sighs> but basically, there's an old track there. Look, I've seen that old track. That's probably an old drove, you know, that they don't use anymore. But that is an old track. Bet there'd be a bit of treasure there. That's been denied access to <sighs> yeah anyway yeah you've got to do what you feels right sometimes having a few beers or a big fat donut yeah have it if you want it you've got to pl you've got to keep the mind happy as well I mean I can understand it with this absolutely grossly overweight people whose health is really threatened by their diet you know and they don't tend to do exercise and they drink an awful lot of Fanta and they eat an awful lot of cake I mean I'm, ob I'm probably classed as obese now but I do go out a lot as you all know who follow me I used to be a runner um, 
Anyway, folks, I, this is the sort of thing I talk about. It's a visual diary. It's personal reflections. Some stuff I share, some stuff I don't. It's who I am. And if people want to listen to my videos, it, I'm not doing a geographical, geological, historical video. You know, as such, I'm doing the here and now of somebody and their construction of reality at the time. It's a moment in time and space. Anyway, I'm going to take a picture over now. Right, everyone, look at that lovely view of uh, Banwell Wood. Big sign back there about shooting. But I've got a feeling this is a public footpath. I want to go up to the gate because see those big trees there? That is where there's a type of big stone. It's a monument to the beard bloke who found the skeletons and all the bones in the cave that time. So I think I can come up here. There's a way across the field to a stile over there. The last time I came I got through some fencing and walked along there. Then I went diagonal across because there was cows in that field. Big black, gross, um, like uh, fierce looking things they were. But this is the sort of thing I like. I'm out here. I could be sat at home doing family tree and be happy as a sky girl. It's true. I could be. I've probably been exposed more than I know it. And, both, and my children. Uh, you know, the young people, they mingle, they mix. I just feel I've, air I've got all the windows open in my flat. I'm airing it. I've got a nice, lovely sort of pasty. It's not a pasty, but I've got something like a pasty when I get home. And a prawn cocktail. Yeah. And a naughty custard tart cake. That'd be hours away. But anyway, like I'm saying, I've come in out. I just love being out here. This is so beautiful, you know. I just love this. I might go up to the, if there's no cows, I'm going to go up to the trees where the beard, because, uh, stone is, because what it is, I've been in the church at, um, Banwell a minute ago, and I took some fresh images of the statue of William Beard. So, what I'm going to do, I can see the stone from here, I can't see any cows, there's the big tree, and then over there, look. Right, okay. Big job it stopped then, wasn't right. it? Battery just went, so what I'm saying, there's the tree, and there's the beard. I think you might, you might, I don't know if it's John or William, but I'm going to have a look on that plaque in a minute. That's dedicated to the burial of a bloke or people and bones of animals. That big stone marks the spot and there's the big trees. Just going to put the camera up there while I change the battery over. Right, that will go in... no. That's the warm one. That one goes in there. That one goes in there. This one goes... This one will go in here. That's another new one, so that can stay in there. Then we undo, we put that one in there, like that. Just zip up a bit. Get that one out. Leave that one in. Plug that one in. Zip it up, both sides, to hold it firm. Oh, 
Why do I always have trouble with these? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm videoing folks, but I am trying to get the two batteries connected. There we go. They will now charge each other up, hopefully. I'm doing everyone. I've taken out the dead battery and re now put it in another camera which will charge it up with the battery charger. I've still got another full battery after the one I've just put in. This is all to do with stuff to do with um, uh, stuff to do with um, photography and anyway last time I came there were cows all over here. Uh, I don't intend going in the wood. I'm not going to go in there. Uh, and, and you can see where they come here, look. They tread. They're, they're probably still about. Yeah, they are. Look, it's fresh pack. The cows are still about, but they're not actually close by. But they could be in the trees there. What I'm doing, I, yeah, look. The cows are around. But basically, they would have gone off somewhere else. Uh, I don't know whether they go down to the farm to be milked or anything. But here's the trees. Up there's the wood and there is a way in. There's also the lower path. I'm not going to risk it today. I said I wasn't going to do that today. Here's the big stone. Here's the trees. This is the area where these bones were buried of a person and uh, I think some of the ancestral bones of woolly mammoth and all that. So, 1842. I can't remember. I've got it all written down, but something about the skeleton and all that. I'll take another picture of it. But 1842, this William Beard bloke um, found these bones in the cave. Banwell Wood and what he'd done is and I don't know if he put this stone here or other people have done for to, to in his memory right so there we go folks this is the stone this is Banwell the cows will be about they're very very fresh pack there they're a big black herd and they don't oh they do not look friendly now, before now, I've walked up that hill to a monument to a woman who died. She's got a big stone at the top of the hill there. I can't remember her name now. It's all on previous videos, though. So what I want to do now is... Um, I just wander in amongst these trees. I'm keeping an eye out in case those cows suddenly appear and I have to run for the gate. But, of course, you can see these trees... They do stick out. They're lovely trees. I'm not quite sure if they're elms. I mean, there was something called Dutch elm disease once. But, uh, right, I'm going to turn off now, folks. Take a picture.